friends welcome to another video from Shomu's biology and in this video tutorial we'll be talking about mammalian expression vectors not in very details but uh, in very small way we are going to talk about what is mammalian expression vectors and why we use mammalian expression vector and uh, because this is a new term and uh, there are going to be a lot of products placements or you know products that are coming out uh, from different companies so if you're a researcher you want to may uh, know about i mean about what is mammalian expression vectors and how those things actually work now the thing is i also have a video on expression vectors a complete separate video on expression vectors you can watch that video anytime if you want the link is probably provided in the description you expand the description and you'll find the link you can click that link and can watch my video about expression vectors or you can search the video with my name to find it very easily now uh, the thing is expression vector is slightly different compared with the cloning vectors because you know the cloning vectors have only one idea that we need to clone a gene right a dna uh, of interest we cut that dna of interest put it inside the cell uh, put it inside a, a vector and we delivered it into the host cell that is the end point of a cloning and then the host cell will divide host cell could be a bacteria most of the time or it could be yeast if you use shuttle vector we can use it for both the purpose now the thing is we put it into the host host will divide so as our plasmid so as our target dna so we'll get a lot of target dna now if you use a expression vector for example a pet vector pet is an expression vector if you use that vector that vector will be inserted to the host dna uh, and, and as a vector and it, it will be placed into the host cell and the vector will uh, replicate itself it will produce the mRNA and that mRNA will be translated into the protein products because in the expression case we want those gene to be expressed that's the idea of expression vector but in a cloning vector we don't want the gene to be expressed we simply want the gene to be delivered inside the cell but in expression vector we want them to be expressed into proteins so once we get the proteins in our hand then we can extract the proteins and we get a huge amount of protein and we can also study the expression of different genes in different conditions by this method now in this case we are talking about expression vectors in mammals because you know mammals and the dealing with mammals and how uh, this expression of the proteins occur in mammalian cells we cannot do that directly in a living organism what we can do we need to do a cell culture a mammalian cell culture for that right because let's say you want to check whether how this expression occurs in the liver cell so you'll take a liver cell put it in a cell line of liver cell a specific cell line for the liver cell of a mouse or a rabbit and you insert this vector inside that cell in the cell culture and then you want to see what is the expression and all the stuff so the idea is slightly different though the thing is the same that we want to check the expression of the gene inside the cell but in this case the problem is the cell is a eukaryotic cell and that creates a lot of problem because eukaryotic cells is much more complicated compared with the prokaryotes so there comes the important thing now the idea is we have the vector we created a vector that vector can be delivered inside the mammalian cell and that can express beautifully that can express properly inside the mammalian cell because if you talk about the pet vector by the way i have a separate video on pet vector and regulation of pet vector also you can check my video on pet vector also in the description you can click the link to see the video now go back here here in this case we don't have that easy access in the pet vector and stuff we simply insert it into the bacterial cell just by bacterial transformation it is very easy to obtain right we simply uh, put the um, dna put the vector into the environment filled with bacteria and we make the bacteria much more competent by applying some calcium chloride bacteria will simply uptake the dna but in this case mammalian cells will generally not uptake any dna or fragments from outside like transformation of bacteria in this case we need to do the artificial transfer of the vector inside the mammalian cell and that is known as transfection okay transformation for bacteria transfer transfection is for the eukaryotes because eukaryotic cells is complicated and they will not uptake things they will get it as a foreign and do all the stuff and kill the and degrade the dna and stuff or the cell will die if something goes wrong so we need to construct a dna very well a vector very well where we put our target dna definitely that is the idea the gene which we want to be expressed in the mammalian cell that is the thing a gene we insert but we want the expression of that gene inside a mammalian cell 
So this is the armor of a vector. There are many different types of mammalian excretion vectors out there in the market and all of them are kind of commercial products. I am not going to talk about any commercial products here. I am going to talk about a simple uh, example of uh, that uh, type of vector. It is a very simple example. And here you see this is uh, how a uh, expression vector looks like because an expression vector should contain origin of replication. Huh? So here we have the origins of replication. By the way, here we have three different origin of replication, not one. And why we have multiple origin of replication? Because it is found out in case of expressions, especially expressions in the eukaryotic cells, uh, not every time the origin works well for a specific type. And there are different genes out there because you know in eukaryotes there is no operon concept because in prokaryotes there is operon concept. So under the promoter if you have six genes, all the genes will express if you start expression of the genes. But in case of eukaryotes, for each gene you need a separate promoter. So we have different set of promoters, yes. Like here F1 promoter, F, F, so different promoters also different origins of replication there because in this case uh, we require that stuff. So here we have F1 origin of replication, here we have SV40 origin of replication and PBR322 origin of replication. What does those name means? Those means I mean from where we get those origin of replication sequences originally because this is not an original vector, this is artificially constructed vector. So SV40 origin of replication means we get this origin sequence from SV40 virus. We get this origin of replication from PBR322 plasmid and we get this origin of replication from F1 plasmid or virus. So here we have three different origin of replication placed there. Alongside what we require, we require a multiple cloning site for any types of cloning. So we have a multiple cloning site here on the top where we can rest, use restriction enzymes to cleave it and attach a DNA which works kind of fine, uh, kind of same like uh, the normal bacterial cloning. Now the problem here is uh, in this case uh, of expression vector we should have a promoter, definitely a strong promoter which will express the gene in high concentrations or high amount and that's why we have a CMV promoter, cauliflower mosaic virus promoter which is found to be a very strong promoter and also it is found to be very very effective in animal tissue culture systems in animal cells. So we use that promoter uh, in this direction. You see the arrow, it's a directionality. We also have a selectable marker because these are the basic things to be a vector. So the selectable marker is an antibiotic resistance gene here, ampicillin resistance gene acting as a selectable marker here. Okay. And what else? We have another thing which is HGH poly A. This is a polyadenylated chain of sequences which after production of the mRNA will be very helpful for us to extract the mRNAs uh, from there and also which is very helpful to be as, as a tag with which we can figure out the proteins which we find out our protein, fish out our protein from the mixture of the contents. That's why we need this tag. So you know if you go back to my video regarding the expression vectors and cloning vectors, you know there are certain things that is that should be present for any types of vector like cloning or expression. Those things are multiple cloning site, uh, selectable marker and origin of replication. They should present in both of them. But in expression vector we should have something more like we should have a strong promoter in this case cauliflower mosaic virus promoter. It should have a tag for screening or finding the proteins of interest. Here in this case we have HGH poly A denylated tail. And it should have also uh, in some cases uh, the expression uh, and also start point of the transcription, end point of the transcription, stop code and all this stuff it should have and in this case everything is provided inside and there is a beautiful MCS where we want to put our target DNA. So if you put the target DNA we can now, now it will be called as a uh, what we know as a uh, recombinant vector, recombinant mammalian expression vector and then we take the recombinant mammalian expression vector, insert it into the mammalian cell. Now this is difficult and this is completely different in that compared with the bacterial transformation because in this case once we prepare uh, this, this thing. So let's say here now, now I am not going to draw the details but I am simply drawing this and let's say this thing is our target DNA which we put or insert. 
now the way to insert it into the animal cell you know animal cell and not only animal we have a mammalian cell it's very very high order of uh, construction so you need to insert it by the process we know as a transfection so basically we have a plasmid artificially constructed and we want to put that plasmid inside the animal cell so how do you do that uh, how we insert this uh, plasmid inside the animal cell now the process is simple to insert it uh, using transfection machineries but uh, i'm not going to talk in detail about the transfection i have a separate video to talk about transfection you can also watch that video in my channel and also the link in the description but the thing is once we insert that then what will happen because once we insert this ampicillin once we insert this complete uh, recombinant plasmid inside the animal cell then the animal cell contains that now there are two different possibilities for the animal cell to have one possibility because both of the animal cell they contain their own nucleus and genetic elements inside right they contain their genetic elements inside but now if we insert this so they can either stay there in the cytosol or we can simply allow it to insert inside the nucleus and join the rest of the chromosome sequence for the animals or for the mammal so it can have both of these effects say this gene can be inserted somewhere inside the nucleus these are the two ways possible that's what we want to focus on if this goes in the first way where the plasmid stays there in the cytosol and the cell is rest of them are as it is in that case we call it as a transient transfection transient transfection means the plasmid you insert it's already present in the cytosol but the nucleus is okay and the rest of the cell is also okay so that is transient transfection but on the other hand this is a proper transfection where your target dna will be embedded inside the nuclear genome for the eukaryotic or mammalian cell both the way it's possible now after this process they have a different effects of how they express the those genes and express the phenotype so these are the stuff that is present there because as we have the origin of replication and promoter if even if the transient transfection occurs still we are going to get the protein products so by this way in, at the end we get all the stuff and this is how we are going to do the cloning for mammalian expression vector and that's how we get the products we'll screen the products using the tags it could be histidine tags or polyadenylated tags whatever it is and we'll get that so this is how mammalian expression vector works if this video helps you please hit the like button subscribe to my channel subscribe button is here hit the subscribe button to get more and more updated new uh, modern topics like this thank you